Hey guys, now I'm Luna here for Char i5 and Lunaticoms. Welcome back to Inside the Artist Studio. If you recall, when I had my first guest on here, the show was named Inside the Voice Actor Studio, but I've decided to change it to also cater to other artists and content creators on the internet. Up next, I have who I hope to be the first in a long line of people I interview from the Channel Fed Editor Network. Now, for those of you unaware, Channel Fred Editor Network is a multi-channel network here on YouTube founded by Fred Seibert and managed by Fred Editor Studios. Fred Raider Studios is most well known for producing animated shows like The Fairly Odd Parents for Nickelodeon and Adventure Time for Cartoon Network. Now, both my guests and I are a part of CFN, and it was thanks to the network and the community that we have that I got, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> that I have the chance to meet her and was introduced to what she produces. She's a comic book artist who has launched her series into books, which you can find on Amazon through the link in the description. She has also participated in the independent film Caster's Blog, A Geeky Love Story, and hosts her own YouTube channel with various content. Would you like to introduce yourself, Mystery Guest? Oh, hi, I'm Paige Lavoie. Nice to meet you guys. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Mrs. Paige Lavoie. Thank you so much, Paige, for granting me this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, that being said, let's begin. Uh, I like to start uh, the, the, the show with a little segment. There are three separate segments. The first one that we start off with is a bit more personal questions when it comes to artists, like things uh, about yourself and things about what you do um, personally, your, your own projects. Okay, so, sounds good. Sorry, I was uh, <laughs> taking a drink of no, tea. It's there was it's definitely silence. Fine. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that you drink tea because um, I recall in your latest uh, video that you said that you needed to drink more tea. Yeah, today is definitely, well, I, I made coffee and it was not good. <laughs> like, it was a really bad French press and uh, I, I kind of powered through half of it, and then I just gave up. I was like, no. <laughs> well, Paige, tell us a little about yourself. Okay, so hi, I'm Paige. I'm uh, 24 years old. I live in Orlando, um, and I do a comic series called Pumpkin Spiced that I write and illustrate and uh, post on pumpkinspice.com. And yeah, I also make YouTube videos where I try to inspire other people to start making comics, uh, particularly web comics because they're awesome. And um, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. <laughs> Paige, where are you from, and where did you go? Like, where are you from originally? Are you from Orlando? No, I'm actually from Michigan. Mm. So the Metro Detroit, Shelby Township area is where I grew up, and. Uh, I think, oh gosh, when did I move here? I uh, moved here with my family when I was like 17, and I'm 24 now, so math, yeah. Yes. Uh, is that the only places you've been? Have you ever gone somewhere else, you know, I don't know, maybe on business or something? <laughs> on business? Um, <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I've never, like, um, taken up a residence anywhere else. I've been to Portland, and I uh, got to do a really cool interview with uh, another comic artist named Kat Ferris, and her work is just beautiful. And we went over to Periscope, per Periscope Studios, and we sat down and, and chatted for, I think, like 45 minutes. And uh, that's over up on my channel, which is YouTube slash Pumpkin Spice page. Which you can find in the description. Yeah. <laughs> what art, I, I know that I've mentioned it before, I always tend to do this before the interview, I mention what... Uh, what artistic qualities the person I'm about to interview has, but tell us yourself, what art do you practice? Um, well, practice in the sense of like trying to get better at, or just practice in general, like it, what sort of art do I produce? Yeah, like in, in general, in general, like if, if it's something you're not necessarily good at, still mention it. Okay. Well, um, I definitely love to illustrate and make comics. So, I mean, I think that's been said already, but, um, with the things that I practice in comics, I've been really working on trying to do uh, really great face expressions and making the characters come alive even more. And hands is always an ongoing struggle. But um, other than making comic art, I, I love painting. I don't do it super frequently, but I think it's really, really fun. And I also play um, the stand-up bass. I'm a little bit rusty, but it's awesome. Hmm. At what point in your life did you know that, uh, were you going to say something? Oh, no, I was thinking, like, I had it, oh, I write, too, yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, having a comic strip, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, um, but I'm working on some, some super fun novels and stuff that are coming out in the future. In the awesome. future. 
Awesome. At what point in your life did you know that you wanted to become an artist? Um, I don't, you know, it's, it's weird to like think back because I don't know if there's ever been a point when I, it like dawned on me like I'm going to make art. But I think just forever, ever since I can remember, I've been, you know, playing with crayons and chalk and doodling stories as soon as I, I could and kind of, you know, making some terrible comics. I remember there was this one about hamsters who started a rock band, which if I, if I ever find, I'm totally going to put it online somewhere and awesome. just be like, look at this awful art I did when I was 10, which maybe was great when I was 10. I don't really know. I haven't seen it in years. But yeah, so ever since I can remember, I've been making art and wanting wanting to do it, but I can't remember like a very specific moment when I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Mm. If you can recall, well, I guess this is kind of the same question in a way. <laughs> if you can recall, when and how did you become interested in art? Um, I think there was always an interest. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to think. I know that, like, my grandpa would draw a lot, and my dad always drew, like, really cool cars, like, super detailed, and that was um, that was always fun to, like, practice drawing, and there was always, like, constructor construction paper crafts going on depending yeah. on like the holidays so I think there was always an interest in art I had a really great art class in middle school high school that like taught some like really fun shading techniques and stuff that um but yeah I, I guess just I have to answer with the generic like forever <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny that you mentioned that your grandpa and your dad because that's a perfect segue to my next question. Is anyone else in your family an artist or at least artistic? Um, I think I think all of us are. Yeah, my mom, uh, I think, puts her art in like baked goods, which is fantastic. Yeah. So um, she makes like really beautiful cookies and just super super great Christmas cookies. Now I'm like super excited for that. <laughs> um, and then my dad, uh, I mean, like I said, he would draw cars and stuff whenever we would be like, Dad, draw a picture for us. But he actually does music, so he is a singer and um, does plays the guitar a little bit too. And uh, I also have a brother and sister, and my sister acts, and uh, my brother makes music, and he draws and tells stories. So yeah, pretty, pretty artsy family. <laughs> yeah, awesome. How did you get contacted by Channel for Red Order Network, and what was your reaction to it? I um, actually saw their video advertisement, and I was just kind of scrolling on YouTube one day and immediately just sent in my channel and stuff. And since I'm not an animator, I didn't really have high hopes of being accepted, but whenever they were like, yeah, you're <laughs> in, I, I, I was very, very excited for the rest of, like, forever. I'm still super <laughs> But um, but yeah, I think there was there was this period of disbelief where I was just like, when are they going to realize that they made a mistake? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah, I'm very very happy to be a part of the network. I think it's a great community, and I've been enjoying it a lot. Awesome, Paige. Who are Violet, Penelope, Isabel, and Scarlet? Um, they are characters from my comic Pumpkin Spice, and there's some kooky ladies who have adventures, and yeah. <laughs> what is Pumpkin Spice? So that is my ongoing comic series that I post online and also have some books on Amazon. And, oh, my gosh, I need to get some more books up there because right now I think I'm on book two on Amazon and it's like book six online. Awesome. But, um, but yeah, it, it is a paranormal slice of life that um, I tr try to kind of drive home the message of embracing your unique qualities and being yourself and also showing some interesting friendship dynamics. Yeah. Cool. Who, who is Lily? Lily is my twin sister. She is, she is a unicorn princess and I love her. She's, we were actually like just talking on the phone before this interview. Awesome. Who is Oliver? Oliver is my adorable, cutesy little dog that I love, and there's actually thunder going on right now, so he's oh. hiding behind my big giant base that's leaning up against the wall on a stand. Oh. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Love Bunny? Love Bunny was a character that I played in um, Caster's Blog, which is an independent movie by Minnesota Pictures, and um, yeah, she was this fun 
like punky teenage girl. And uh, yeah, there's a behind the scenes video of that over on my channel. And I'm super excited for that too. Uh, I don't, I have no idea like release dates and stuff like that. I know there was a screening a couple weeks ago that I wasn't able to attend, but I, I think it's going to be a really fun, fun project and fun movie. And I can't wait to see how it turns out. Awesome. Paige, who is that gentleman with you in your ALS bucket challenge? That's my super handsome, amazing husband, Matt, who, he's just the best. I, I'm, I don't, I don't want to like swoon too much, <laughs> but he's pretty swoon worthy. And he's really creative too. He's, uh, he does amazing art and uh, he's, he's great. That's great. Have you ever drawn inspiration from someone for one of your characters? Uh, yep, I have. Well, I think all of them definitely have a piece of me, you know, because I, I feel like that's really a common and hard thing not to do when you're uh, creating different characters. But um, other than people, the characters who are inspired by me, uh, Trixie is inspired by my twin sister. And she's just fun and zany and ready to party at all times. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I asked because, well, after reading Pump and Spice, I noticed how it. I know that it's very difficult considering. Well, I'm my, my me myself. I'm writing uh, various different stories, and it's really hard to you know write different personalities for the characters and not make them all too similar to each other. Yet in Pumpkin Spice, all your characters are are really unique, and I just don't. I I couldn't. I couldn't really compare to like compare them that much to each other. I just think that they're they're very unique and they're really fun. That is like really really nice to hear. Thank you. <laughs> Paige, what's your favorite thing about being an artist? Um I think just, you know, in every aspect whether it's a video or a comic, just being able to create something new and fun and figure out ways to I don't know, just make it more interesting that was such a terrible answer um <laughs> like being able to let's let's start again being able to uh create like take a piece of paper and have like a sharpie and a pencil and make it into something beautiful is just something that i think is a really cool experience yeah that's great what's your least favorite thing about being an artist probably just how critical we are on ourselves and like self-deprecating a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really easy to get into a loop of everything I draw is terrible. <laughs> and, um, and also, you know, if, if you have a lot of friends who are artists too. Um, oh, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great because you can, you can definitely pick each other up and, and. It's, or really put each other down. <laughs> I mean, Luckily, I feel I feel lucky now because uh, a lot of we we normally kind of it's 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 like that dialogue of your art is great and it's like no mine mine is it's okay but your art's great and it, you know it's kind of a cycle of that sometimes but if if you're lucky enough to have that, like, those sort of friends I guess because there are other friends who actually just kind of make you feel worse it's like oh I'm so proud of this drawing it's like oh you you really have to see and then you just show it. it's like oh, well, it's all right. And it's like, oh, I feel terrible. I've wasted so much time trying to make it oh. so good. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think there's a way to give um, a healthy critique. And that that can be hard. I think both parties need to be in a place to receive the feedback, if that yeah. makes sense. Um, you almost have to be like, instead of, hey, look at this thing, like, hey, look at this thing, and I would love constructive feedback on it. You know, yeah, like that's the thing. Definitely. How has drawing and writing changed or enriched your life as both an artist and as a person? Um, I think definitely drawing and writing, especially, I think especially the writing, because that's something that I can just pick up and do without a lot of forethought. Um, it helps a lot with anxiety, where if I'm just feeling like I'm in like a terribly anxious mood, I can sit in front of my laptop and open up Google Docs and start writing either an existing story or a new story and uh, afterwards generally I'll feel like a lot calmer and uh, it helps me kind of sometimes like push through weird anxiety moments. <laughs> oh, that's very true. 
Do you consider yourself as someone who does what she does for the sake of art or someone who does drawing and writing for some other reason? Definitely, I think for the sake of, I mean, art and also just that, I, I, I think I do it because I have to. Like, I don't, I don't know. And I don't mean that in a, like, because it's my job and I have to get it done. I think <sighs> it's because, like, I love it so much and I, I just can't see a world where I'm not doing storytelling in some way, shape, or form. So... Yeah, I, I think just I do it because it makes me happy and makes me feel fulfilled. And yeah, I just can't imagine not doing some sort of storytelling. <laughs> what inspires you to make your comics? Um, I think just everyday life and experiences and also the characters themselves at this point. Um, I actually did a gag a day series with some of the same characters that are in Pumpkin Spiced uh, a while ago, and they've just really developed throughout the years. And I feel like they yeah, they've kind of become their own people. So now I'll think about, about Trixie, and I'll be like, oh, I could tell this whole side story about her, and how would like putting these fictional characters into situations and figuring out how they would react to them and and things like that, and react with each other. So, yeah, I think I just, yeah, draw a lot of inspiration from real life and also the characters themselves. Speaking of the characters themselves, who is your favorite character from, Pump from Pumpkin Spiced? I can't pick a favorite character. You have oh, to. <laughs> I can't. Um, I, you know, I don't think I have um, a favorite, to be just totally honest, because... Uh, like this last story uh, that I did, it's, uh, gosh, I think chapter five or six of the story. Um, it was very Trixie and Violet, like just tons and tons of tons of them in the story. And through that, I felt like I got to know Violet better. And I was enjoying drawing her like a lot. And now I, I just, I love her more as a character. So I think with Depending on who the story is focused on the most, that almost becomes my favorite character at the moment. Mm. Um, but I, I really do love drawing Penelope, and there's also a lot of like super secret things that are coming up with her in Ooh. the distant future. So um, I think because there's like that sneakiness to whenever I draw her, where I'm like, no one even knows what's going to happen, that, um, that she's kind of a favorite in that way. Awesome. Yeah, I, I kind of think that like, when, when you started saying that you couldn't really pick a favorite, I really, I guess I kind of put you in a hard place because it's like picking a favorite child in a way. Yeah. How did the transition from comics to full flesh books go? Um, you know, I think because I did NaNoWriMo last year and I remember one of the things I was saying was, oh my gosh, I have to write out all of this stuff about like the background, like the room that they're in, because the audience can't just see like, oh, well, they're in, you know, a coffee shop or something like that. Yeah. You actually have to be like, you know, oh, we were sitting in wooden chairs in a rustic looking, you know. Um, so I think just having to do that and like get comfortable in that was um, like an interesting transition. But I've always, I think I've been writing stories um, longer than I've been doing comics, like, well, doing comics seriously, so it wasn't a super hard transition to make, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about uh, about that book, too. It's currently being edited by one of my friends who's, like, just super talented, and yeah, it, I don't know when it's going to come out, so I can't say, but Aww. it's going to be great. Well, you've done your fair share of conventions. What's that like? Um, super fun. It can be exhausting, but I really enjoy it. It's so cool just to see so many different people and costumes and getting, like, seeing also people's eyes light up when they walk past your table is probably, I don't know, just one of my favorite feelings. Awesome. Growing up, did people consider you weird or particularly different? Because a lot of artists, because a lot of artists that I know kind of felt like that before they even took art seriously. Um. Yeah, I I think definitely. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I was, I mean, I never felt like too like alone or ostracized because I had my twin sister and we also had some really great 
friends in like our homeschool group that were all we were all our own special kind of weird or quirky but um you know i think i think that just comes with being like a creative like high schooler or middle schooler where you're learning how to like express yourself so you and I know <laughs> there was this picture that I found at my parents house recently and I was like I want to say 12 and I was wearing like this like ridiculous like almost anime character-esque but in like the worst way outfit <laughs> and like there was there was like overalls and like rainbow I it was it was a mess <laughs> but you know like and I looked back and I'm like oh I was I I kind of looked like super geeky you know like and <laughs> And uh, my sister was just like, yeah, but, like, in the best way we thought that. And, you know, so we, it was it was good, but definitely was always my own special kind of awkward and nerdy. And I think, I think that's great. Awesome. You have your own YouTube channel where you post many different things, but one thing stays true. Why the fisheye camera? Um, yeah, I like it. Uh, it, it was, I needed an upgrade for my flip cam and it just seemed like the best camera option. Um, and with the fisheye lens, if I do conventions and stuff like, uh, convention videos, you can get so much more of the room and yeah, I mean, I, it's just a good camera and I enjoy it. There wasn't a lot of, uh, forethought with the fisheye lens. Yeah, because it's weird. I, you don't usually see many people who use the fisheye lens, and when I started watching the stuff on your channel, I was just like, oh, that's kind of odd. <laughs> like, in, not not in a bad way, it's just like, oh, it's it's quite unusual to see people use that sort of camera or that sort of lens. And maybe that's just because I don't have tons of, like, camera knowledge, where I was just like, this looks cool, and as long as I don't stand too far off to the side, I don't look weird. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, there is an option to make it a normal lens, which I did in the pumpkin spice tag video. Yeah. However, it's a little bit more pixely and I don't really, I don't like it as much. So yeah, I, I don't know. I just like, I, I'm just digging the fisheye lens currently. <laughs> I understand that you like the Pokemon series. I, d I do enjoy a good Pokemon. Yeah. Which Pokemon is your favorite? Oh my gosh. Okay. So... There's so many now that it's yeah. like, I mean, now, now, like, it's, it's one of those, because any sort of, like, what's your favorite question, I feel like there's always a long pause, like, yeah. what, oh, I can't Jesus. even remember one of them, like, ah. Uh, oh, then you're going to um, love what's coming up next. <laughs> good, good. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. That's really, I remember, I don't know the name, but I remember for a while, I really liked the one that kind of looked like a, it was like a flower with like a hula skirt, kind of. Uh, uh, but I don't remember her name, so I don't think that counts. I, there's a Cubone, like, sitting next to me. So, I don't think he was ever my favorite. But let's go with the entire Squirtle Squad, because, <laughs> yes. And I really want to do, like, a 1950s girl gang cosplay of a Squirtle Squad member. So, I'm going to go with the Squirtle Squad. That would be awesome, actually. I'd love to see that. Anyway... Uh, now we move on to our second segment, which uh, I'm going to be asking you stuff that's a bit more professional. Like it's still okay. about it's still about your art, but it's a bit more on the professional side of things. Sounds good. How do you think someone becomes an artist? What a, what an interesting like and like not not to like knock the question, but that's such a strange question because I think like anyone can be an artist and. Like what? I guess what's the definition of an artist is kind of the the real question there. Like, I mean, do you just decide one day like I'm an artist now? Like, I think anyone who makes art is an artist. So, if you want to be an artist, make art. Like in the simplest terms. <laughs> what's the essential thing an artist must know? The essential thing that an artist must know is. I don't know, depending on your, well, no, not even depending on your medium, but, like, uh, you just have to have a willingness to learn and to practice and get better. And just, yeah, keep practicing and don't push yourself down too much because, yeah, you're going to have good days and bad days, but just keep going. 
what advice do you have for breaking into the business? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, continue to make content that you're proud of is, I think, my only advice there. If just continuously produce quality content that you are really happy to have your name under. And, yeah, and just that's that's all I got there. Do you think having connections are necessary for breaking into the business? Um, I think networking is probably pretty important, says the girl with not... You know, it's so weird because I don't... When I see people and I meet new artists and stuff, like, I don't really think of, like, I'm making a connection. I'm just like, I'm making a friend. Yeah. So I think I'm probably the worst person to answer that sort of question because... I'm I'm really bad at the 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 schmoozing and the networking, but it, it probably helps to have friends who can connect you with different jobs and opportunities. So yeah, it, it probably. Now, since you're a comic book artist, what do you think is easier, writing the story or drawing the characters? I like to have an outline of a story, so kind of know the direction I want to take it, and then write while I am storyboarding. So I, I like to do both kind of at the same time in like a super, super rough draft. And then as I'm drawing it, a lot of times the story will shift a little bit and maybe dialogue will change. So I, I kind of do both at the same time. How has the entertainment industry changed since you've, since you've begun your career? Um, I mean, social media, I guess, is, has been a huge huge thing that you know you want to promote on the Twitter and Facebook and all that so I think one thing that's changed is that just there's more and more to think about and consider like now not only do we have uh, Twitter but we also have like other things like additional crap like the ongoing crowdfunding that like Patreon offers and mm -hmm. lots of there are lots of platforms now to think about and try to manage your time with and and yeah so I think that's def definitely been a change that there's so many apps and there just seems to be more and more and more what kind of higher education if any is necessary for professional performing artists performing artists like um well you, like, like, like the theater no or? no no I, I guess it's I guess the question should be in a more general aspect, not just performing artists, but like people like yourself that make uh, comic books and full-fledged books and, you know. I was going to say, I mean, if you're going to be doing like some circus arts, you probably want to take a couple of classes, probably more than a couple of classes, probably like study a good amount of years before you can do like crazy spinny trapeze stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I mean, I did not go to an art college or even a regular college so I mean from personal experience I think art school is great or any sort of school to advance like your knowledge is fine but whether you do that through college or whatever I think you just have to seek out opportunities to learn so whether you're doing courses online or something like that um, I think I think just Seeking out knowledge in whatever field you want to pursue is is just very necessary. Right now, I'm doing like a free course on um course Corsia Corsana course something, but um it's comic history, and I'm doing that with one of my um, friends who does really really awesome art. It's a uh, Perito Press, and we've been doing that class together so far. So that's been it's been really great to learn about like the history of an art form that we both like love so much. Awesome. What would you recommend for aspiring artists, people who are just getting into the whole deal of designing or in your case starting a webcomic and the like? Um, I would recommend you draw a lot. Like if you're not, you need to draw like if you can draw every single day. I mean even if you're just putting 5 minutes aside. Um, I have some videos over on my channel with advice on getting started and building a buffer and I'm actually filming a video later where I'm talking about speech bubbles that hopefully is going to go up tomorrow, either tomorrow or Friday. But um, yeah, I, I think 
something great to think about when you're starting a webcomic is you also want to be reading comics and get an idea and feel for how they're laid out and how you know speech bubbles work and stuff like that but really the most important thing is if you want to do comics make comics and like make them frequently and some of them are going to be awful but that's okay because it's all just learning and it's gonna those terrible comics are going to help you make great comics in the future so just keep going what non-educational requirements and qualifications do you think are needed to become a professional artist? What non-educational? Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that I understand that question. Would you mind rephrasing it just slightly? Um, like what? What sort of things that don't involve school and what? What sort of like personal aspects do you think are needed to become a professional artist? Well, like, I think th th things that are like in in yourself and that you can't really learn at a school. Gosh, I mean, I think just the desire to create art and and yeah, you have to. I mean, you don't have to love it, but you should you should love it and get some amount of enjoyment from what you're creating. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think anyone can make art. You just have to want to and also you know you can't give up so <laughs> <laughs> yeah doing what you do assuming that you live off of your art what kind of living do you make oh um well i yeah no i don't i don't really make enough to live off of with mm. with art at all <laughs> so it's more of just a hobby and you know you sort of get paid for it um well you know, honestly, like, um, I don't know that I know how to articulate a response for that because I definitely, I don't know, <laughs> I definitely didn't get into comics or web comics or YouTube videos to make money. It's, it's definitely a passion and like a just labor of love that I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, the monetary aspect of it isn't as important to me as just the storytelling and the enjoyment that I get, I get from it. And, you know, if if stuff changes in the future, like, fantastic, but if not, then, I mean, the the passion and, like, love of the project is there. And I think, for me, that's the most important, and that varies from people depending on their situation, but, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Do you think having a second career is necessary for being an artist? Um, like I said, I think depending on your situation, that's a very like um, personal decision that you're going to have to make depending on lifestyle and and yeah, where you're at and and all that sorts of things. So I think that's really up to the individual. What backup jobs do you think would be most useful for aspiring uh, artists? I think if you can get a backup, well, I guess it's not a backup job if it's in your field, but I would say anything where you can thrive creatively is would be really valuable. So if you're a writer and you can get um, some sort of job in the writing field where, you know, maybe you're not writing the exact thing that you want to, but... Um, you know, doing doing something that will help you stay on top of your skills and stuff. Uh, I think I think would be like the ideal situation. Mm. What's the which is the most common second career artists tend to have? Um, you know, I'm I'm not super sure. I I've met artists who are librarians. I've met artists who. You know, like I think, I think the cliche one that everyone thinks of is uh, probably like a barista, but um, and I mean, yeah, I really think that there are artists just in like scattered amongst so many different fields that that's really hard for me to to answer. What are the most common mistakes do you believe aspiring or amateur artists make? Oh, <laughs> oh! Well, uh, now that makes me feel bad. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of. Um, well, let me make it personal because I, I have a hard time, like judging 
that sort of thing, especially when it's other people's art, because I think what, one thing that I did um, was, like, I would put out artwork that I knew deep down wasn't fantastic. So, like, if you know that you need to, like, spend a little bit more time shading or you want to sharpen up your lines a little bit, like, you know, take the time to, to do it and make the piece something that you can be really proud of. But I think, yeah, I mean, something that I definitely did was not pay attention to the sort of fonts that I was using in my comics and also speech bubble placement and that's probably something common that people do because I mean font oh my gosh there are so many options out there and it's it's hard to choose a good one so maybe maybe that I, I know that was definitely true for me so <laughs> what's the usual process that you go into when drawing your comics um, I really, really like to do a very rough storyboard of what I want. So I'll open something up on Manga Studios and I'll do all blue inking and I'll just kind of like map out what I'd like, um, how I'd like the panels to look and where I want the characters at. And then I will kind of go in and do a little bit more of a refined like, like sketch over top of that. And then I'll figure out where I want my speech bubbles because you want your speech bubbles to go in <laughs> before your art is finished. So if you need to accommodate and do some wiggle room there. Um, but yeah, um, and I've already said that I like to write and storyboard at the same time. Uh, this next book that I'm writing, I actually have like all of these notes um, before I'm actually drawing it, which is uh, a little bit different. But um, it's just, yeah, I... I it kind of because I, I needed like um, a shorter story to do so I was like okay well I'll jot down some ideas and so sometimes that happens but um yeah just kind of work in Manga Studios until I have something that looks like a comic <laughs> <laughs> what's the usual routine of an average writing session for you um okay so when I'm working on like a novel sort of thing I kind of just write and space out so I'm not going to be checking like I'll be trying to do grammar like to Sometimes. an extent <laughs> to an extent but um like during NaNoWriMo oh my gosh I just basically I feel like I can never type as fast as the ideas are happening mm. so um yeah like first drafts are always something to just kind of like, like really really check over after yeah. Right now, I'm doing a story where I have the first draft, and I'm actually writing that down into a notebook, and then writing it back down onto the computer just to really try to expand it and, like, sharpen up all the grammar stuff. And, yeah, it's kind of more of, right now, I have, like, uh, the first five chapters, so I'm kind of doing that as an experiment to see if it might be a process that works for me in the future. It's funny that you bring that up because I guess I didn't have this question planned, but would you consider that uh, having like a notebook with you at all times would be better when it comes to writing or it just makes it easier so that you don't lose your ideas? I think having, um, you know, phones make it a little bit easier to jot down stuff when you need to, but I think having a notebook or a sketchbook in, I mean, I car carry around kind of a big purse, so it's easy for me, but... um like having that around you is great whether you're doing art or um or novels or whatever uh because yeah you want to you want to get that inspiration like down before it fleets away yeah. like flies away like a little little bird <laughs> do you oh, i'm sorry before that is there anything you do to improve your skills be it drawing or writing um with Writing, I have been trying to make an effort just to capitalize all my eyes and stuff. Um, I'm looking at a, a course that's just kind of brushing you up on basic grammar and whatnot. Um, just, you know, not because I feel like I'm terrible at it, but I think there's always room to learn there. And um, drawing something that I've been trying to sit down and do once a day, it's, it's been come more of a every other day thing, is uh, face expression charts. And that's been really fun. I really, really like that. Um, and sometimes I'll go on like a figure drawing website and just click play and random pictures will pop up and you have like 
I don't know, you can set random times. So sometimes you'll have 20 seconds to like try to sketch out a hand and, and stuff like that. And I think, I think that's super fun. And I, I definitely want to work that more into daily routines and stuff. Cool. Do you ever act as one of your characters when you're writing them? Um, not really. I, I think depending on the emotional state of the character, whenever I'm writing them, um, like whenever I was writing this past comic with Violet, I just felt really emotional while I was working on it because it was kind of an emo emotional arc for her. Um, so I think if anything, the emotions of the characters kind of rub off on me sometimes. Mm. What should an artist always do? Uh, never stop making art and believe in yourself. Yeah. I'm doing a thumbs up right now, but you can't see. <laughs> what should an artist never do? Um, never well, give up. <laughs> yeah, never give up. That's like been this whole interview. I'm just like, believe in yourself. But I really oh, that's think that, great. that's great. You know, as cheesy as it sounds, I think it's so important. That's that's just great. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with being cheesy in something like this. I mean, yeah, it's totally perfect. So much cheese, like a that whole food's cheese section. Yes. Yeah, it's that cheesy. What would you say to someone who wants to start a webcomic? Um, you should probably start a webcomic. Like, <laughs> hey, have, like maybe uh, just, yeah, just like, do it. Hey, 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 you listening right now? You wanna you wanna start a webcomic? You should you should do it and uh, yeah and have fun with it and yeah let all your creative crazy zany ideas just go into this this comic project of yours and if you want to check out my videos and stuff you can do that and hopefully uh, yeah and leave comments if you have any questions about making web comics and I always try to do my best to answer them and and help out because starting a web comic can be super stressful yeah. Well, guys, we're sadly reaching the end of this interview, but before we do, we're going to end it with the famous questionnaire popularized by French writer Marcel Proust, asked years later by French TV personality Bernard Pivot, adapted by James Lipton on his interviews. Miss Lavoy, what is your favorite word? Mrs. Lavoy, why did I say miss? <laughs> I was almost about to say Mrs. just to be super sappy. But um, <laughs> what is my favorite word? I really like flabbergasted. Flabbergasted, that's a good one. <laughs> What is your least favorite word? My least favorite word, I don't know. I don't, I don't like moist, but I don't hate it as much as other people. But for the sake of like moving forward, I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? Oh, um, um, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, I thought I would get you with the words. <laughs> You're having a hard time. No, no words I have down. What creatively? Oh, geez, I almost don't. Even, I really like listening to positive and like empowering podcasts. <laughs> so, um, when I'm drawing, a lot of times I will um, put on the the Lively Show, and she'll interview just really creative. Uh, most of the time she she interviews other women which is great and uh i love listening to stuff like that while i'm working and uh the paper wings podcast like that's also another great one so yeah i, I guess like i really enjoy listening to some like positive and inspirational podcasts while i work on stuff what turns you off um probably just whenever i get into super like self-deprecating doubting myself mood which I try to like just take a break and I mean sometimes go for a walk or make some tea or whatever and just you know like refocus that energy into something that is a little bit more positive so basically getting into a really bad mood <laughs> <laughs> what feel free to say it what is your favorite curse word okay so yeah I don't know that I have one um, I would probably say, just as like an actual curse word, probably the F word because it's so versatile, but I try not to swear that much 
And in lieu of swearing, I've been saying bananas. But I was also say it for like, like it slipped into everything. So instead of saying that's crazy, I'll be like, that's bananas. And my husband does it too now. Or I don't actually know who started it. It might have been him that started it. But, um, but yeah, we're just, that is so bananas and holy bananas. So bananas. <laughs> <laughs> now you need to like um yeah you know, like ask another question you're just like bananas what <laughs> no it's just like i don't know <laughs> what sound or noise do you love what sound or noise do i love um i i i like music i don't know that's a that's a tough one <laughs> yeah we're gonna go with generic answer of music is great to listen to yep what sound or noise do you hate? Um, I really don't like my neighbors yelling. That's pretty annoying. I'm so glad you <laughs> you finished it with yelling because I was like, I really don't like my neighbors. Like, well, okay, but what sound or noise do you, <laughs> no, do you hate? No, I just they they yell a lot, and I guess yelling in in general like is just like so frustrating. So like, yeah, if you're trying to have a relaxing night and there's like either shouting at the TV or whatever. I'm just like, no, neighbors, come on. <sighs> <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, pretty much anything in the realm of, like, storytelling I think would be awesome. So, I mean, I never thought that I would, like, attempt acting, but I did that in that caster's blog thing, and that was a really cool uh, experience. So... Yeah, I'm pretty much open to anything in, like, the realm of storytelling. I think it'd be so cool to be, like, um, any sort of part of an animation team or, like, writer's team on a, on a show. I think that would be, like, just so neat. Um, so, yeah, all the things. All the things. <laughs> everything. Every, <laughs> obviously everything. <laughs> what profession would you not like to do? I mean, I probably wouldn't want to be a garbage man. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not dissing garbage men out there. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I don't think that, yeah, I don't think I'd be good. <laughs> Finally, Paige, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, probably, like, welcome home. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what can we look forward to with you? Um, more awesome pumpkin spice story stuff coming on the website, which is linked to below, but it's also pumpkinspice.com and, um, uh, videos on YouTube and my book convention queen should be out sometime, hopefully, no, definitely sometime next year. And that's going to be a really fun diary of a geeky teenage girl that I think everyone listening should totally that you're, you're going to love it. So stay tuned for that as well. Definitely. Where can we follow your social activity? Okay. So I have two Twitter accounts. I have one for pumpkin spice that I try to keep mostly art stuff and updates, which is pumpkin underscore spiced. And then I have a personal Twitter where I just tweet about random nonsense. And that's Mrs. Page Lavoy with no spaces or anything. Um, I'm on the Facebook. I have no idea what my URLs for that are, though. I can I can send you links, so if you want to sure. put them in the description. Um, so those are listed down below. And, um, yeah, also the website, which I think I've said a million times. Uh, and YouTube as well. So, yeah, pretty much all over the Internet. I'm on all the websites. All of the websites. All of the websites, yep. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Paige. Um, I had a lot of fun with this interview. Um, I, I don't know. For some reason, in every single interview I do, it's like, I just feel like it could go on for so much longer. And I feel like the answers or the questions were so short. But I don't know. It's like, it's already been an hour and it, just time goes by so yeah, quickly. Yeah, it did fly by pretty fast. I, I think um, for, like, the technical, like, um career related questions I, I floundered around a little bit but <laughs> it's fine. I mean it's definitely fine because people and this is what I love about the interviews people have just so many different quest, uh, questions different answers and different sites on on what I asked them and you know 
maybe you had a, a pretty hard time asking, a, answering the uh, professional things a bit more. And, you know, you kept things on a pretty concrete way. And I, I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day because I know how busy you are. Uh, and you just let me interview you. And I hope, you know, that I was a good host and that, you know, you had fun with this, too. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. I would love to have a follow up if, you know, I were ever so lucky. And, you know, if we could collab sometime, that would be awesome, too. Cool. Yeah. Just let me know ideas and stuff. And <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, guys, um, please go subscribe. Go watch your stuff. It's really interesting. Quite recently. What was it like a few months ago? You did um, a sketch a day thing. Oh, yeah, I was. I tried to do that for, I think it lasted a couple weeks, but it was uh, Daily Doodles. It Daily. might come back sometime, but probably not in the near-ish future. <laughs> so, yeah, like go check that out. Go check out Pumpkin Spiced, which we've mentioned a thousand times already on the show. Link is in the description. It's really fun. It's really awesome. I didn't think I would be that engaged because I don't like reading mangas or comics that much because I get too engaged and then I, you know, a lot of time is wasted, but... No, I really enjoy Pumpkin Spice. It has a, a lot of interesting characters, a lot of cool concepts. Um, I will be doing the Pumpkin Spice tag, <laughs> just to let you know. Yeah! <laughs> and um, I guess there's really nothing else to say. I mean, just follow us, follow her, especially on, you know, the social media sites and all that, Tumblegram, Twitter, Twitter, Facebook. And, well, you know, thank you so much again, Paige. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Say hello to everyone for me, and thanks for watching. This is Char 5 signing off.